UFC, the world leader in MMA. Experience it on FS1. Hello, Sao Paulo. The UFC Octagon has touched down in Southeast Brazil as some of the country's best sons and daughters prepare to defend the home soil. And there is tomorrow's main event. It is a rematch six years in the making as all-American wrestler Ryan Bader faces one of Brazil's most popular fighters, Rogério Little Nog No Gear. And how about this bantamweight bout? 25-year-old prospects Thomas Almeida and Albert Morales clash with only one loss between the pair. The FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts now. Tomorrow they fight, today they weigh in. Hello everyone there in Brazil. We're in the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. I am Karen Bryant alongside UFC Tonight host Kenny Florian and the reigning, defending, welterweight champion of the world, <laughs> Tyron Woodley. Laura Sanko's on location for us as well. Tyron, though, we are still catching our breath. What a phenomenal fight at UFC 205. I told you. <laughs> I told you I was going to have the best performance in the entire card. We went out there, and I can't do it by myself. Wonder Boy put on a great performance as well. I have not soaked the moment in yet. It was such a historical moment. I was blessed to be a part of it. It really was spectacular. But amazing performance from both of you. Yeah. We will be sitting down with Tyron tomorrow on the pre-fight show. Kenny and I have got a lot of questions about that night and that fight. So make sure you tune in for that. But, uh, Kenny, let's talk about tomorrow night's main event. We've got Ryan Bader and Rogerio Noguera. They're going to run it back. They met six years ago. We're going to start with the All-American from Arizona State, Ryan Bader. How much of a different fighter is he today than he was in their first fight? Well, Bader really is a much different fighter than six years ago. Back then, he was essentially just a wrestler with a big right hand. But now, he really has improved technically. Um, but he's also improved strategically and tactically. The way that he approaches fights now, he's so much more smart. Smarter, just really knows how to uh, pace himself during a fight and get the win. And his opponent, Nagara, some things get better with time and age. He is a great boxer. Obviously, we've seen him knock guys out over and over again. At times, we forget that he's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. He showed against Pat Cummins, but you cannot count him out. Um, I think this is going to be a phenomenal fight just because of the style matchup itself. And we do know that Little Nog is coming off of victory in Brazil, that knockout of, uh, of Patrick Cummins. But let's talk about our co-main event, though, Tyron. Uh, 27 wins, only one loss between the bantamweights, Thomas Almeida and Albert Morales. This is going to be quite a scrap in the co-main event. I cannot wait for this fight. These two guys would not decline. They would not say, hey, we're not going to the battle of the, of the brawl. They will be there. They will be scrapping in the middle of the octagon. One person is more tactical with his combination, utilizing body strikes and kicks. The other person is just having fun. He's enjoying being in the UFC. This is something he's wanted to do for a very long time. He showed no octagon jitters in his debut. I look forward to this battle. I'm telling you right now, this fight is going to deliver. These are two finishes right here. I mean, you look at Almeida, 20 of his 22 fights are finishes. And for Morales, five of his seven fights are finishes. Both these guys can get it done, both on the feet and on the mat. I love this fight. Well, and you've been an Almeida fan for quite some time. What, what is it specifically that you like about him? I love the way that he gets on the inside and beats up the body. He'll go inside, land that left hook to the liver, always finishes his combinations with leg kicks. So he's always hurting you. He's always slowing you down. And when you do get hurt, he takes you out. And you don't think Morales is too reckless in, in there? You think he's got enough tactical ability to face him? I think you got to be a little bit reckless with um, going okay. against Almeida. Yeah. If you try to be too tactical and too strategic, you might find yourself getting outstruck in the, in the in striking exchange. So I think he has to be a little bit reckless and go forward. All with right. control, well, though. Yes, yeah. with control, always. We will see what happens. The table is set. <laughs> Let's send you down to Brazil, where Hodges Lima is our master of ceremony. Salve, salve, São Paulo! Hello, everybody around the world! Aqui estão os responsáveis pela grande festa de hoje, as nossas Octagon Girls, Camila Oliveira, Jenny Oliveira, Luciano Andrade, Mr. Mick Maynard, que é o novo matchmaker do UFC, Joe Carr, vice-presidente internacional do UFC, Mr. Lawrence Epstein, CEO do UFC, representante da Comissão Atlética Brasileira de MMA, e vamos para a pesagem oficial do UFC, Bader vs Nogueira 2! Primeiros homens a subirem na balança. Luta que você acompanha também no UFC Fight Pass. Francimar Barroso e Darren Stewart. 
the first on the scale o primeiro aqui na balança é o Mr. Taryn the dentist Stewart Darren the dentist Stewart is the undefeated mixed martial artist that will make his first walk to the octagon tomorrow what he lacks in experience he makes up in floor pressure and toughness he loves elbows ground and pound and he's willing to take one and give one the dentist looks to make some noise in his UFC debut Official weight is 205, 93 kilos para Tarrant Stewart. E vem aí o seu adversário, senhoras e senhores, Francima Odo! Novo Neo Black Belt Francima Bajos is hungry. Originally scheduled to fight C.B. Dalloway at UFC 203, the bout was scrapped on 24 hours notice, leaving Bajos ready and willing to get back in the octagon as soon as possible. The official weight is 206, 93 kilos e 400 gramas para Francimar Botão. Vamos para a pesagem da segunda luta. Categoria peso galo. Benton, weight division, lembrando que as duas primeiras lutas você acompanha também no UFC Fight Pass. Vem aí, Pedro Munhoz e Justin Scoggins na categoria peso galo. Senhoras e senhores, recebam Mr. Justin Scoggins. Justin Scoggins is in constant motion and has a lot of dangerous and flashy weapons in his arsenal. He actually learned his striking style training with Ray and Stephen Thompson when he was a boy in South Carolina. He missed weight his last time at flyweight and is now competing at bantamweight. The official weight is 135, 61 kilos e 200 gramas para Justin Scoggins. E vem aí o seu adversário. And his opponent, Pedro the Young Punisher Munoz. Pedro Munoz returns to his hometown of Sao Paulo in search of his third UFC victory. Living and training in the United States, he says that returning to the city he loves so much for the third time in as many years is a dream come true. The official weight is 135, 61 kilos e 200 gramas para Pedro Munhoz. Lembrando que essa luta você também acompanha no UFC Fight Pass. Welcome back to Los Angeles. You can catch the next four prelim bouts tomorrow in FS1. Starting with heavyweights Christian Colombo and Luis Enrique Tyron. Let's talk about the Danish Muay Thai fighter Colombo. Colombo, he's a former Army veteran. And, um, he's a tough fighter. Obviously, you know, you have to have that mindset to be in the octagon and going out there and getting the job done. He will go out here tonight and he will try to go to war once more, but inside the octagon. <laughs> the official weight is 151, 113 kilos e 800 gramas para Christian Colombo. Vem aí o seu adversário, Luiz Henrique KLB. Luis Enrique is a decorated grappler with multiple Brazilian titles to his credit. But I spoke to his coach yesterday and he said that more than anything, he's a fighter motivated by family. Despite keeping his first MMA bout a secret from them, his parents are now his biggest supporters. Kenny, you've called fights down in Brazil. Do you get a good turnout for the weigh-ins? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, the fans love the this sport. The official weight is 256. 116 kilos e 100 gramas para Luiz Henrique KLB. Especially when you talk about, a, you know, a, such a populated city like Sao Paulo, they are going nuts right now. 
Vamos para a pesagem da próxima luta, like divisão dos Galos. Não, ele não parece que ele tem que checar. Tony Eduardo e Manvel Gambudia. O primeiro no escale é o Mr. Manvel. O Anvil Gambudia. Manville, we would not call him Manny because I got a feeling he might judo throw us and wrap us up in some type of leg like. I've had the pleasure going to go court gym. Those guys train at an entirely different pace. You walk on the mat, it's pretty much live when you hit the ground. So we love watching his judo throws, his reckless abandonment, his punches. He throws everything 100. He's not trying to set you up. He's not trying to time you with a jab. He's always in a potential fight and I'm excited to see on this bout. Yeah, many a real veteran here of the sport as well. The official weight is 136. Goes all the as far back as Ken Klo. He was on top five. Yes. They fought for a WC title. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, receive on Johnny Eduardo. Well, there's Manny's opponent, Johnny Eduardo, a three-time Muay Thai national champion in Brazil. You can tell from his phenomenal speed and knockout power, he was he was re actually responsible for much of the sharp striking over at Andre Pedernares' Novo Niao. And he says he wants to break his opponent's jaw like he broke Eddie Wineland's. Easy, Johnny, easy. <laughs> the official weight is 136. 61 kilos and 700 grams for Johnny Eduardo. It's good to have a purpose, though. Yes, exactly. You got to have goals. <laughs> Vamos avançando, vamos para a pesagem da próxima luta, subindo um pouquinho de peso, divisão dos meio pesados, Light Heavyweight Division. Vem aí, Marcos Rogério de Lima e Kazim Muhad, Antigo Love, o primeiro a caminhar para a balança, o Mr. Kazim Muhad, Antigo Love. Coming into his UFC debut, Russian fighter Gadi Murad Antigulov is riding a 12-fight win streak, 10 first-round stoppages, and all against very high-level competition. In fact, his six last opponents have a combined 90 wins between them. The official weight is 203, 92 kilos e 100 gramas para Gadzimu Hart Antigulov. Senhoras e senhores, recebam. Marcos Rogério de Lima, o Marcos Pesão! Marcos de Lima. It's funny having two Pesaos in the American Top Team. They both mean Bigfoot, if you don't know what that means. Um, you know, he, he's had 11 KO victories. He finished 11 of his opponents in the first round. He's a tough three Brazil contestant, pro kickboxers, and he's finished six of his last wins by finish. The official weight is 206. 93 kilos e 400 gramas para Marcos Pesão. He's all business, too, isn't he? Yeah, that yeah. must be a prideful nickname in Brazil. Yeah, he's a foot. Division of Smedges, Middleweight Division. Vem aí, César Ferreira Mutante. E Jack Hermanson. The first on the scale is Mr. Jack. The Joker, Hammerson! After making a successful UFC debut just two months ago, Jack Hermanson was excited to extend his nine-fight win streak as soon as possible. He got his wish, and here he is in Brazil, and he says he's ready to meet the traditionally hostile Brazilian fans with his signature Joker grin. Special of being the bad guy down in Brazil, too, huh, Kempo? Oh, he's getting booed for sure. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's got that he, awkward smile. He really kind of looks like the Joker, Loki. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> the official weight is 186. 84 kilos e 400 gramas para Jack Hermanson. E vem aí o seu adversário, Cesar Ferreira Mutante! Well, Mutanchi, or the mutant, is an expert in both capoeira and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so it's safe to say he's very familiar with Brazilian, with his Brazilian fighting roots. He's had his struggles, but is back on track with two wins in a row. We have seen him training at that Black Zillion, with the Black Zillions, but he has been training with MMA Masters in Miami, Florida. The official weight is 185, 83 kilos and 900 grams for Cesar Mutanchi. 
He, of course, was on Tough Brazil. He's Vitor Belfort's pro. Yeah. Vitor speaks very highly of him. Oh, He's yeah. also got some time with, him with Kenny Monday. Nice, He that's already right. has some really good, you know, time double legs. So. There you go. Not a bad, not a bad addition. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Vamos avançando. All right, folks, welcome back to the desk here in Los Angeles. We're ready to weigh in the fighters on the six-fight main card. First up, welterweight Sergio Marais and Zach Otto. T. Wood, what do you know about the UFC sophomore Zach Otto? You know, Zach Otto is from Milwaukee, so a lot of the fighters are some of my teammates. Mike Biggie Rose had competed against him, so I kind of knew him before he got to the UFC. He's a well-rounded fighter. He's not world-class in any category but he's solid in every category. So he has good conditioning, good striking. He had a great showing against a veteran, Josh Berkman, on very short notice. He went out there, he showed no signs of rust. He showed no signs of fading in the later rounds. So it should be a very good fight. Official weight is 171, 77 kilos and 600 grams for Zach, the Barbarian Otto. And his opponent, to seu adversário, Sergio de Panta! Oh! Wow, that is a big pop there for Sergio Moraes, who grew up uh, as a kid in Brazil being inspired by Hoist and Hicks and Gracie, and must have been a pretty surreal moment when he beat Hickson's very talented son, Crone Gracie, to be the 2008 world champion in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at the black belt level. And since then, he's won more world championships is now fully committed to being a UFC champion. Nothing's more impressive than him doing a cabbage patch to his head. <laughs> so if you, nice. you're, too, you're too young, know about that. So that was a cabbage patch. The official leg is but if you look up the word beaming in the dictionary, that's what it looks like right there. He is very happy to be there in front of some Cup fans. That's going to be so fun for him tomorrow. Brazilians are loyal to their fighters. Yes, they are. A gente continua na divisão dos meio médios, o Welterweight Division. Vem aí o Ali Alves e Camaru Usman. The first on the scale, primeiro aqui na balança, o Mr. Camaru, the Nigerian Nightmare, Usman. Winner of Tough 21, Black Zillions prospect Kamara Usman remains unblemished inside the octagon. Despite five of his eight wins coming via knockout, he said he plans on being the best grappler at 170 pounds. Guys, I appreciate confidence. Kamaro has called out Damian Maya. Yes. <laughs> yeah, a guy that no one wants to fight. No. So it really shows that he is definitely committed to trying to be the best grappler at 170 pounds. What, like, what do you think about that? That's your division, man. I'm going to just let the weight go first. And I'll stand by the side. I think he has the right idea. I do think it's maybe one or two more fights before he gets pump that Pump the brakes a little. Not pump the brakes, but you know, I like where you're going with that. <laughs> but his opponent definitely has seven victories by submission. He's also a tough um, Brazil three contested. He's undefeated as amateur, three-time Brazilian kickboxing champion. But when it gets to the ground, he has some vicious ground and pound. He is very aggressive. And we, I would like to see if Usman can really control that aggression that he's going to come out in the first round with. The official weight is 171. 77 kilos and 600 grams for Wally Alves. Slingshot. <laughs> Perfect timing for that. I, absolutely. This is a tough fight right here. Yes. Oh, they're making it real. They're getting all close and personal. Almost close to the um, Weidman Anderson. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Vamos subir um pouquinho de peso agora. Vamos para a pesagem na divisão dos médios. Middle weight division. Yeah, they did. Dallas Leites <laughs> e Christoph Jotko. O primeiro aqui na balança. The first on the scale is Mr. Christoph Jotko. Oh man, what a great fight this is. Jotko is yet another tough Polish fighter with a phenomenal record. He's tough to take down and has excellent striking and expect him to be even tougher since moving to ATT in South Florida. Gotta watch out for Jotko's crazy knockout power. He's really good footwork as well. Yes. Good footwork, slight on his feet, does a great job of timing his punches, circled laterally very well. 
185, 83 e 900 para Christoph Jotko. Senhoras e senhores, ladies and gentlemen, vem aí, Alice the Rustic Ladies. Coming off a dominant victory at UFC Fight Night 92, veteran Talish Leitis is on his way to regaining the momentum that had him on the cusp of title contention in 2015. He's a fighter with lots of avenues to victory. His last four wins have all come via stoppages. The official weight is 186. One of the only fighters to go the distance with Anderson Silva in a uh, title fight as well. Yep, people forget about that. Fought a hard fight with our guy Michael Bisping as well. Great fight. Yep. Hard to imagine, but Courtney Casey was actually involved in a car accident just one day before signing her bout agreement. Despite sustaining some nasty injury, Cast Iron decided to go ahead with this, the biggest and toughest test of her career to date. The official weight is 116. 52.600 para Courtney Casey. Kenzo, you're a former Miss. soccer player switching to MMA. Oh, you must yeah. like Courtney Casey. I love it. Oh, Showing that all oh, soccer players are wimps, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there is Claudia Gadelia, who, in my opinion, is, you know, the second best straw weight on the planet. Uh, and despite already being at a very high level, she declared that she can't wait to show everyone how much better she has gotten since training at the famed Jackson Wink Mixed Martial Arts team. She believes training at a high altitude and learning new training methods is going to get her back on track. And folks, so, yes, that is the Brazilian flag she has carved into the side of her head there. Now, I know you guys like Almeida Morales, but this could be fight of the night right here. She looks like she about that action right now. Yes, she is, always. Benton Weight Division, Thomas Almeida and Albert Morales. The first in the balance, Mr. Albert, the Warrior Morales. The undefeated Albert Morales is a very tough fighter who says in 2013 he had to do something with his life or face prison time or death. He chose professional prize fighting and has a knack for finishing his opponents both on the feet and on the mat. This kid is very excited. When you start mentioning prison time or death, that makes the octagon not as scary <laughs> exactly. as some other people that might just came from a martial art background. He's not shy about that flag. He's just representing hardcore. The official weight is 134. 60 kilos, 800 grams for Albert, the warrior, Morales. Vem aí o seu adversário and his opponent, Mr. Thomas Tomias Almeida. Thomas Almeida is one of the hottest prospects in the game, guys. He's only been a decision one time. He's had 20 finishes out of his 22 bouts. This kid is a finishing machine. He will go to your body. He will kick you in the leg. He will kick you in the head. He will do whatever it takes to get the job done. 61 kilos e 200 gramas para Thomas Almeida. Love it, Kenny. Confirmada, portanto, a penúltima luta. 22 fighters have weighed in, only two more to go in Brazil. Before we put the headliners on the scale, though, let's take a closer look at both fighters in our main event. In this fight, I'm fighting uh, Nogueira, Little Nog. Um, I'm going in there, this is a rematch. I've never had a rematch in my career, so I'm excited about it. Uh, I just feel like I've evolved so much more from my first fight. You know, I beat him then, and this time I look to do it in more devastating fashion. Alguns erros me fizeram perder essa, essa vitória, escapar do, das minhas mãos, e eu tenho certeza que dessa vez, então dessa vez, vou dar o meu máximo para tentar o um nocaute antes do final do, do tempo, do final da luta, e não deixar essa luta na mão dos juízes.
It has been very exciting to watch Ryan Bader learn and grow inside the octagon. What we're seeing right now from Ryan Bader is a much more fluid striker. From the time we saw him in The Ultimate Fighter, where he was a wrestler with just good knockout power, to what we saw in his last fighting, where he was a smooth, technical striker. With a sensational knockout victory over the very dangerous Alir Latife. Little Nog is one of the best boxers in the UFC's light heavyweight division. He has crisp striking, he has a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he has a lot of experience. Little Nog is coming off of an excellent victory over Patrick Cummings, and he would love nothing more than to keep that going with a victory in his home country of Brazil against Ryan Bader. Essa luta favorável que eu estou lutando em casa, eu tenho a torcida do meu favor. Os fãs podem esperar uma luta agressiva, onde eu vou procurar o meu caucho de início ao fim. I'm going into this fight with Nogueira, you know, I'm going to leave it all out there. You know, this is time to make a run, and I believe I can go out there and be the champion. So I'm going to go in there, you know, extremely motivated and finish him. Well, there you have it. You've got a setup of our main event, Ryan Bader versus Little Nog. And, of course, Ryan Bader took the fight the first time they met six years ago. So we shall see what happens when they square off tomorrow night. Let's send it back down to Brazil with Hodges Lee. Well, there is Little Nog. Him and his twin brother, Big Nog, are legendary MMA fighters who have fought and won all over the world. Rogério is known for his heart, his boxing, and his arm lock submissions. You have to watch out for his ability to cut off the cage, and he has a very dangerous right hook as well, guys. To look for that tomorrow night, he's coming off a big win over Patrick Cummins, so expect him to fight with a lot of confidence in his home country. Guys, Lil Nog is uh, about to have his first child with his wife, and uh, he has said that they'll be bringing in the next generation of No Garras, so. Little Congrats. Little Nog. Little Little Nog. Yes. Baby yes. Nog, yes. if you will. Congratulations. And his opponent, Mr. Ryan Bader. Ryan Bader, he's won six of his last fights. For you guys that do not know, which I assume you do, Division I wrestler, two-time All-American there at Arizona State. He has eight wins by KO. He has a victory over Little Nog in the past, so we will see how that rematch goes on tomorrow. Would you beat him in a wrestling match? Um, you know, I'll probably give him some, you know, something to work with, something yeah. to think about. I don't know if I can beat him. He's a little heavy there. Yeah. Rogério, você tá vindo de uma sequência de lesões, sem conseguir emplacar uma excelente vitória em cima do Patrick Cummins agora em maio. Como é que vai ser a festa amanhã? Como é que é a sensação de lutar em casa? E nesse momento é importante para sua vida, para sua carreira profissional. You're coming off a bunch of injuries, but you're coming off a win over Patrick Cummings. What's it like fighting here at home tomorrow night? What's the party going to be like here in Brazil? Acho que lutar em casa é depois de muitos anos aí, a segunda luta que eu tô fazendo aí no mesmo ano consecutivo. É uma fase boa da minha carreira, estou retomando uma fase boa, vim de um grande nocaute, o Ryan Bader está lutando em nossa casa e amanhã ele vai ver a derrota. Leave a message to your fans. Deixa um recado para os seus fãs. Oi? Deixa um recado para os seus fãs. Leave a message to your fans. Isso aí, amanhã vai ser um lutão, galera. Pode esperar, vou dar o meu melhor. It's my second fight in Brazil. I come an awful knockout earlier in the year and uh, I'm in a really good phase in my career so the fans can expect a great knockout tomorrow. Rogério Minotoro Nogueira! Mr. Ryan Bader. Primeira vitória em cima do Minotoro. Decisão unânime, agora você vai lutar na casa dele. Como é que vai ser? Como é que você se preparou para esse combate? O que você pensa em fazer amanhã com o Minotoro em São Paulo? You beat him by decision the first time you're fighting here at home against him tomorrow. What do you expect that the fight's going to go? You know, he's a legend. I respect him very much. You know, I look to go out there. And uh, although you guys won't be going for me, you know, at the end, I want you guys to be cheering because it's a great fight. I respect the Brazilian fans. You guys have passion. Appreciate it. Ele é uma lenda. Eu espero uma grande luta amanhã. Eu espero que vocês torçam muito por ele porque eu respeito ele muito também. Vocês são ótimos fãs aqui no Brasil. Boa sorte. Good luck, Mr. Ryan Darth Vader. Senhoras e senhores, amanhã, 
A gente se fala. Não perca o UFC. Hader versus Minotouro. All right, well, thank you, Hodges. Things are official now down in Sao Paulo. Kemplo, your initial reaction here on the rematch where our headliners between Bader and Nogueira. You know, there's a lot on the line for these two. You know, obviously, they fought six years ago. Um, and what I'm hearing from Rogerio, he's saying all the right things. He says, I, this isn't my retirement fight. I, I want a top five ranking after I beat Bader. And for Bader, he's been so close to fighting for that belt, he realizes he needs to get by this guy. Yeah. You also have to realize it's very tough to beat someone for the second time. Uriah Hall was a fluke. Anyone that knows anything about this sport knows it was a fluke. You guys know I can beat him. Revenge is sweet. Yeah, I need to shut him up. And that's what I intend to do. Usasi looking for the finish. You stand up with Uriah Hall, and he will make you pay. The rematch will happen. UFC Fight Pass is your ticket to more than 1,000 live bouts. Check out live events from over a dozen fight organizations, including featured matchups on UFC Fight Pass early prelims. Invicta, the world's premier all-female MMA organization. Catch MMA from the Midwest's action-packed Victory Fighting Championship. See the live jiu-jitsu tournaments on the Eddie Bravo Invitational and the world's best kickboxing on the Glory Super Fight Series. Start your free trial now. This is amazing. A rematch for the title. I can't wait to see it again. Maybe I'm lost in the grind, forcing my all out this time, forcing because there'll be no more bonds and it's lost in the fire. Daniel Cormier! Oh! Good Lord, that is a terrifying man. Anthony Johnson. Watch for the kicks of Showtime. Never ask me to hell. Big right hand. Never ask me to hell.